Today I will be discussing about the soil water. In short, what water does in the soil mass, what are the different types of waters which are present in the soils, how to differentiate them, what is their role, what is capillarity, what is bed ozone, and how to answer the questions which society is asking, in particular why infrastructure gets damaged, why buildings are collapsing why roads are not functioning the way they should have. Uh, so, all these questions come or they, they become quite relevant uh, when you uh, see the perspective from uh, the soil water and what water does in the soil system. Sometime back I had talked about the different types of water which are present in soils and uh, this is where I have given you some hint that uh, uh, there is something known as environmental water, there is something known as free water, there is something known as hygroscopic moisture, there is something known as adsorbed sobbed water, bound water, sometimes we also call it as hydrated water. Now, this is a topic of great uh, interest to the researchers who are working in this subject and uh, particularly those who are more interested in understanding how the environment causes contamination of soils and that is the reason. Uh, nowadays, this is being studied quite much in details and a lot of emphasis is on understanding what moisture does. So, it so happens that uh, most of the properties of the soil of the soil are dependent upon the moisture content. And this moisture content is nothing but the uh, soil water. Those of you who are interested in advanced research in this area should refer to soil water characteristic curve. Now, this is the most latest thing in the uh, geotechnical engineering. But for undergraduates, it is not a good idea to start discussing this right away in the class. So, when I say most of the properties of soil, uh, be it shear strength, be it compressibility, be it consolidation or be it permeability. Now, permeability has different roles to play in different subjects. I think I have been emphasizing upon this starting from petroleum to the motion of any fluid in the geomaterials to the water which is of interest to geotechnical engineers. And from here we say <coughs> that if soils are cohesive or non-cohesive or granular all their characteristics are bound to change, because the water holding capacity is going to be different. And soil water characteristic curve is nothing but a quantification of what is the water holding capacity of the soils. So, if I talk about the soil moisture. Soil water is a general term and soil moisture is a particular term. <coughs> soil moisture is valid mostly for the fine grain materials.
not for the coarse grain materials. The first category of the soil moisture is the one which is uh, adhesion characteristics. So, depending the mechanism of adhesion of moisture on the fine grain materials is adhesion. <coughs> Sometimes we also call this as adsorbed. So, those of you who might get a chance to work in you know research laboratories, uh, there the terminology used is adsorbed or absorbed. Mostly this is valid for the colloids and for a quick understanding colloids is the particle size which is less than 1 micron all right. Normally, we talk about the clay fraction up to 2 microns colloids are at the 1. <coughs> so, it so happens that if I take a grain of a fine grain material this is the soil grain. The moment this comes in contact with water <coughs> there will be a adsorbed layer formation. All right. This is also known as adsorbed water, sometimes people use this as bound water, sometimes they also use the word hydrated water. In short, most of the adsorption is because of the surface characteristics of the grains. The surface are hyperactive, if you remember, <laughs> their surface area is going to be extremely high and hence their affinity is towards anything moisture or contaminant which comes in contact with it to adhere it onto itself. Now, in between the two particles or the grains of the soil, we will have free water. So, all this is free water sometimes we also call this as gravity water. Sometimes we also call this as a pore water all right. So, this is the first time I am using the term pore water. Most of the characteristics of the soils would directly depend upon the pore water or in other words the pore water which is the water which is present in the pores of the soil mass would be controlling all of them. And henceforth our focus would be to understand how the pore of pressure characteristics <coughs> control all the fundamental properties of the soils. Adsorbed water also contains sometimes <coughs> the cohesive water. and solidified water. All right. So, the combination of the two is adsorbed water, which is a fundamental characteristics of the colloids. When you get a chance to work in this uh, sub clay particle ranges, uh, as I was talking about in petroleum industry normally these type of uh, deposits are quite frequently encountered, where you are dealing with the sub fraction of the soil particles which fall in the category of colloids less than 1 micron. <coughs> now, if you compare the uh, bound water and the free water. Is the free water. What you will observe is that <coughs> the boiling point what is your guess bound water boiling point will be more or less than the free water. <coughs> it is all bound, 
by the particle and particle is having lot of electromagnetic forces. So, this is going to be higher than the free water all right. So, if I say that these are the characteristics. So, if I write like this is ok that means, the bound water boiling point is higher than the free water. One of the ways to understand the difference between bound and free water would be <coughs> if I take a sponge, if I soak it in water, if I take it out of the water column and just keep it on the surface all right. So, whatever gets drained out because of the gravity is free water all right, this is not bound by any particle there is no electromagnetic force acting on this. So, this is just free to follow the gravity. However, the pore water is the one which is still remains in the pores because of the capillary action and this we are going to discuss in details today. <coughs> the freezing point now what is your understanding what will happen to the freezing point? Freezing point follows the reverse trend all right. So, the bound water freezing point is going to be less than the bound water sorry uh, bound water uh, the uh, freezing point of the free water, because this water is free follows the gravity and hence it would get frozen first as compared to bound water. Now, if we talk about the viscosity, these concepts you require in R and D. So, you cannot say that these concepts should not be discussed, these are very very important concepts. So, viscosity of the bound water is going to be more than the free water. Most of the industrial processes where you form different types of you know <coughs> products, they all depend upon this type of series. Then surface tension, so surface tension also of the bound water is greater than free water. Those of you who might get a chance to work in the field of agricultural sciences, lot of research is going on and lot of focus of interest is nowadays agriculture because of you know <coughs> food assurance. The population has increased, everybody is talking about productivity of the soil and by our human intervention what we have done, we have destroyed the productivity of the soil. So, they call it as a food security, check it on net how much work is being done internationally. Now, I hope you can realize when I talk about the food security for a for a country for a population these concepts will become very important, because if you have most of the time the free water which is of not much of use and unless you design the systems the chances are that this water might be available to the plants freely, but at the same time if the soil happens to be coarse material it may drain out. So, you do irrigation and water is the commodity, you do not have much water. Question is can bound water be utilized for growing plants hydroponics, you go to 5 star hotels what do you see there <coughs> in glass crushed glass they are producing plants is it not. So, these are the plantations which are soil less that means, they may dose some chemicals, some activators some resins, some zeolites which have a very high tendency to retain moisture and this moisture slowly diffuses through the root zone. So, this is a big subject is this ok, I am not going into the details of this. <coughs> so, it is the free water which is ultimately going to guide uh, all these properties. So, free water and the powder is going to which is the same thing is going to guide most of the properties of the soils. The second classification is remember this is the first type of water which we talk about adsorbed. The second one is absorbs absorbed water. There is a difference between the terminology which I am using this is the adhesion or adsorbed and this is absorbed 
any idea what this would be. So, you take a rasagulla, take it out of the pan in which you are making it or you have soaked it in the syrup, squeeze it. Those who are diabetic what do they do? They will squeeze it, squeeze out, squeeze out all the syrup and then they eat it. So, the free syrup which is equivalent to the free water has been displaced, but still the rasagulla feels sweet. Why? Because some amount of sugar has got absorbed into the pores. All right. So, this water is the same like that. The wilting point has something to do with the absorbed moisture content, which we with the terminology which we use normally in agriculture engineering. <coughs> absorbed moisture content can be divided into two parts hygroscopic and capillary. Remember some time back when we were talking about the moisture content determination of the soils, I was using these terminologies. In a city like Bombay, where the humidity is extremely high, if I dry oven, if I dry a soil in the oven, particularly fine grain material, and if I bring it back to the room temperature, what is going to happen? Because of the surface activity, a layer of hygroscopic moisture is going to surround the particles. So, hygroscopic moisture content is equivalent to the moisture which normally spoils your table salt, correct. So, this is because of the humidity, because of the hygroscopic behavior of the clay mineral or the material which makes it proactive to absorb moisture, correct. <coughs> Another difference is adsorption is mostly a surface phenomena absorption could include surface as well as intermolecular and that is why I gave you logic. Even if you squeeze out the syrup, rasagulla is still sweet, is still sweet correct. So, absorbed moisture will have two components adsorbed and sorbed. Sorption becomes important when you are talking about contaminants in soil which is not the scope of the discussion in this class. Hygroscopic is the environmental moisture. Hygro is try out the word hygro. What is the meaning of hygro in your mobile? Hydrous is water, is it not? So, what is hygro? When you say anhydrous compound, hydrous compound, you understand the difference between hydrous and anhydrous? So, what is hygro? relating to moisture, simple moisture on the surface. So, if you consider a small particle and because of the humidity in the environment, this particle uptakes some moisture that becomes hygroscopic. There is a difference, adsorbed water will have some sort of a energy of binding, clear. This is something which is not going to have any energy of binding it's just free water you take this soil put it beneath the a lamp of 40 watt 20 watt it will simply evaporate so this is not a bound water this is a bound water remember <coughs> correct so when you say bound water lot of energy is associated with the binding of molecules are prevalent <coughs> See the third type of the water is phreatic water. You must have come across this terminology in your irrigation engineering courses, is it not? Where you are designing dams and when you talk about the storage capacity of the dam and so on. Have you come across this word or not? Phreatic. What is phreatic? Check on the net. P H R E A T I C phreatic. <coughs> I 
which follows gravity atmospheric all right. So, suppose if I give you an example that there is a hill and then this landscape becomes like this, this is the let us say ocean or a lake or it could be a river all right. When the rainfall occurs what will happen? Some portion of the rainfall will become runoff. So, this is the rainfall and some portion of the rain would get percolated all right. So, this is the percolation. <coughs> now, hypothetically if I draw a plane like this towards the land, this is the land side, this is the water body side. This zone is known as a Weddow zone. You remember we have talked about this unsaturated zone. However, this line is known as a phreatic line. I hope now you can understand what is the meaning of phreatic word. Some of you could locate it. Yes. And exactly. So, what I have done intentionally I have matched this line with the free water surface. So, this is the gravity water whatever gets run off whatever gets percolated ultimately this will come and meet the phreatic line. This is the gravitational water atmospheric conditions prevail over here. So, the pressure all along this surface are going to be pressure is going to be one atmosphere always fine. Now, we will see how we are going to utilize this concept. <coughs> so, about the phreatic water Sir. yes please. Sir, what is the force in hygroscopic? What is? The dominant force. This is only a surface phenomenon a thin layer of water which comes only because of the surface activity. Surface activity could be your cation exchange capacity or the surface area. So, you have a lot of parking places which are available on a fine particle because surface is very high water molecules just come and sit over there, there is no bonding of any type. So, the moment you heat it, the moment you put it in a wind everything will get blown off. Adsorbed water also means? Adsorbed water has energy because this is having the energy of what is known as the binding or the bounding. So, that is why we use the word bound water. So, this water is bounded to the soil particle because of some energy, it could be bendable forces. Is this fine? No? It's okay. Yes. Pressure at the phreatic line is going to be always one atmosphere, natural STP conditions, standard temperature pressure condition. So, the I am going to talk about phreatic surface. So, basically phreatic surface is the gravitational water whatever gets percolated ultimately settles down over here because the level of the water has to be maintained fine. Number 2 on the phreatic line the pressure conditions are atmospheric. This is how you define it because this is see what is the pressure at this point <coughs> atmospheric pressure. So, it has to get balanced with this. So, imagine you have in the offshore environment water and ultimately it has to come and meet the ground which becomes a ground water table. So, the ground water table also has the pressure conditions same as the atmospheric conditions is this ok. Now, concentrate on what I am going to write. <coughs> the phreatic water is subjected to gravity. capillary action does not play an important role here. That means, by virtue whatever you check on the net everything is going to be saturated. So, this is the Weddow's zone this becomes your saturated zone. One of the ways to define the phreatic line is this is the boundary between 
saturated soil mass and the unsaturated soil mass clear and today after some time we are going to discuss what is the state of stress in the meadows zone and in the saturated zone so then your funda will become very clear here the state of stress is going to be tensile and beneath the water table everything is going to be compressive is this part clear let us begin this i think then you'll catch it up <coughs> number 2 the phreatic water will saturate the pores of the soil completely saturated situation <coughs> beneath this point anywhere in the soil mass the pore water pressure will be more than atmospheric pressure have you understood this so suppose if i consider a point over here at point p the pore water pressure is going to be atmospheric pressure plus the pressure which is existing because of this much column of the soil and water another property of the phreatic line is that it tends to flow laterally why <coughs> after few days when we will be talking about the seepage in the soil mass we will realize that the movement of the ground water is always in the horizontal direction because permeabilities are more as compared to the up and down and this is a blessing in disguise nature has created a system like this where the water table will not change in the vertical direction much but it will keep it moves only in the lateral direction so one of the properties of phreatic line is that the water moves laterally is this okay <coughs> so i'll write a condition here the phreatic water is the gravitational water and the pressure at this point is equal to 1 atm one atmosphere as a geotechnical engineer most of my interest should be in this as for undergraduate or the beginning of the subject or the initiation of the subject is concerned but later on i think you will realize that in country our own country there are not many places where you have enough water and the country is having acute crisis of water that means the meadow zone becomes more important to study as compared to the saturated zone but i am not going to discuss this so when you talk about the mechanics of the meadow zone this fundamental behavior of the soil becomes very important but one sorry no just hold on for few minutes as i said in the meadow zone the pressure is going to be because of the capillarity so i am just going to come on that so by virtue of the basic difference is anything which is the water table would be either dry if it is a granular material water cannot stand there because of gravity water goes out or if it is a fine grained material you remember we have discussed this case earlier also if this is a fine grained material capillary action would be there we will be discussing about this and hence some portion of the meadow zone would be either variably saturated or partially saturated or unsaturated clear so these are three cases which we have created out of this so this dynamics becomes more important to understand for the present day techn techn technologies as compared to this yes so then now you are complicating the whole game but good i am happy that you have asked this question so now the sea water intrusion will start you know the density driven flow will take place so you have to now sit in my environmental geomechanics course but it's a good question so why this De deccan peninsula is having problem of drinking water because salt water diffuses into the fresh water all right and this becomes a diffusive contaminant transport 
Okay. So, coming back to your point anything which is below the phreatic line is going to be positively stressed anything above the phreatic line is going to be negatively stressed and we will see why it happens. Any other question? Yes, please use the mic. So, how we theoretically compare the freezing point of two material substance? Two materials. I mean, you can do calorimetry. Remember, in your 10 plus 2 calorimetry, which you have studied, you were talking about the heat of reaction. And uh, if you really want to find out, Bini, can you answer some has this question? She is an expert in freezing of soils and freezing of the pore solutions. You can you can also add to this question. Uh, so, are you particularly asking about the uh, bound and free water? How can you measure the freezing point? Yes. So, very in very simple thing which you can observe during uh, uh, the experiment is like uh, you remember that that whenever phase change is happening freezing boiling the temperature remains constant so for a longer duration of time during freezing the for uh, free water it might be zero but for bound water it will be like minus 2 minus 4 you will see the tem a temperature plateau in that region thermodynamics of the system yeah use the word thermodynamics they can follow they have done a course in thermodynamics yeah, and as sir How said much energy you have to extract out to make the system freeze is what you are asking. Yeah, and uh, you can use calorimetry also if you want to be very specific and quantify the phenomena. Actually, these are the on the basis of uh, practical knowledge. How we can is there a something so that we can get the difference by any theoretical knowledge or a guess? Can you please repeat your question? Basically, what uh, you are saying that it is after the practical experiment. Uh, is there something to guess the freezing point of two substances? Not the freezing, guess the freezing point, but to compare the freezing point of two substances. What salt does in water when you freeze it? What sodium chloride does to the freezing point? Excellent. So, I think now you can connect. You want to uh, compare the freezing point of two substances, am I right? Is that your question? And how to do this in laboratory? That is your another question. Without doing experiments. Without, okay. Do you know uh, what it means by freezing? That first of all we have to answer, right? What happens when freezing is happening to the state of the material? It, its energy will increase or its energy will decrease? You are taking out the, you are extracting the energy out of the system, correct? So, this is the only way you can answer this question. This is what he was also asking that what is the difference between the bound water and the free water and the hygroscopic water it is only the level of energy which is bounding a layer of water molecules onto the particles clear. So, when we said viscosity is high under what circumstances viscosity becomes very high high pressures low temperatures one of the examples clear. So, you can create similar types of situations and then you can justify these answers. Okay. Freezing point decreasing because of addition of salts, because of change of the rheology and so on. It is an interesting question what you are asking, but then it has very elaborate concept. Yeah, anything else? Just to complete the, my response, uh, so we, we will look at like we will see how easy it is to extract the energy from the system. Any system that will govern the freezing point. So, if there is some mechanism which will oppose the removal of energy, the freezing No, 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 energy of crystallization, you should talk about the oh. crystallization. Yeah. So, basically freezing is nothing but crystallization. 
one form of crystallization. Correct? Read more about it. Yes. You should be having a mic here. Oh, is there a hello? So, why is there a difference in surface tension between the bound and the free water? Okay, I will answer your question in 5 minutes. All right. So, one of the ways to characterize Now, let us go back to the basic capillary model to answer your question and what you have been asking some of you. <coughs> Characterization of Weddell's zone. So, by definition first of all this is a zone in which capillarity is predominant. All right. You remember the basic uh, concept there is a small glass tube and which is kept in a water bath. So, this is the glass tube normally we call this as a capillary tube that means the diameter is going to be extremely small very very small diameter all right and uh, this is a glass tube or a capillary tube. Where do you find capillary tubes in day to day uh, real life situations? Uh, not really. So, very good, but then keep this question in mind you should relate with this answer. The store diameter is much more. So, a good example of capillary would be Okay, pores of the skin, you have gone to a different level altogether. Apart from this, simple devices which you use in day to day life. Sorry? Sorry? Roots, yes, <coughs> but that again is a capillary action in the soil. So, I am just asking about a simple device which you use in day to day life. Capillary action, towel again falls in the same category thermometer. Thermometer is a beautiful example of a capillary tube all right. So, the moment temperature increases there is a rise in the temperature sorry the moment temperature increases there is a rise in the height of the capillary mercury going into the capillary tube all right. So, this is a glass tube or a capillary tube of a very small diameter. So, this you have done in your 10 plus 2 physics. <coughs> If you leave it like this, this is the water column, free surface, atmospheric pressure, phreatic surface, agreed? Suppose A A, <coughs> what is the dynamics of the system? The moment you put this glass tube and a capillary will get formed, sorry menisci will get formed, this is the meniscus. draw the free body diagram of the meniscus. This height h c is known as capillary rise. All right. The free body diagram would be something like this. The glass tube and this is the meniscus <coughs> this is the surface tension your question was related to surface tension this is the contact angle alpha between the water and the glass tube glass is of quartz and sand particles are also of quartz, minerals are mostly quartz, 
So, this alpha can be obtained by help of most of the devices which are available nowadays, uh, they call them as goinometer. In Professor D V Singh's lab, uh, they have goinometer where you can measure the contact angle for the capillary action, all right. So, most of the R and D is being done in this context. <coughs> so, if the diameter of the tube is D, now can you draw the pressure distribution? I hope you have understood that why this there is a rise in water column in the capillary tube. That means, there is a negative pressure which is acting over here, it is a suction pressure as if the water has been sucked by the glass tube. So, if I consider a point here, let us say point number 1 and point number 2, what is the state of stress at point number 1 and point number 2? If this is the z at point 1, yeah, this is gamma w into z, is this ok? This is positive pressure. Anything which, which is beneath the phreatic line, atmospheric line is positive. How would you find it out? If I take another small tube, which is known as a piezometer. Have you ever seen a piezometer? You tubes you have seen? So, if you connect a piezometer over here, please understand this concept carefully, because this is going to be very useful forever. So, this tube is known as a piezometer. Nowadays, I can put an electronic sensor, which will measure the pressure. So, I can measure the pressure earlier days, this is how the pressures used to be measured. Go to any ICU, where doctors measure the pressures of your body, clear, body fluids. So, piezometer always gives positive pressures. Piezo is a sort of a pressure, which is atmospherically induced. However, if you keep a tensiometer at this point, you know normally tensiometers are oppositely designed, this is how the tensiometers would be. It is a tube like this, so if I keep the tensiometer over here, there will be a drop in water column up to this level, which is H c. So, a tensiometer measures negative pressures. Tension is the word which is used for negative pressures. So, capillarity always gives you negative pressure. Somebody was asking this question, all right. Piezo pressures are always going to be positive. So, state of stress at point number 1 is positive. A state of stress, this is suppose if I say normal stress sigma, I will remove point, I will simply say sigma 1. So, sigma is the normal stress water cannot take shear stress, I hope you agree. At this point 2, the state of stress would be, there is a drop in water column. So, minus H c multiplied by gamma w, is this ok? <coughs> what is H c? Can you compute H c? Hydrostatics concepts you can use. So, what is the force which is acting on the system? If I take components, this will become T cos alpha and T sin alpha will vanish, I hope you understand, because T sin alpha is on the periphery. So, this is not going to contribute, yes please, sorry, sorry, P 1, yeah, normally we define pressure as sigma normal stress, all right. So, because P 1s are normally used at the point. So, this is the normal stress at point number 1 and this is the normal stress at the or point number 2, clear, P 1 we do not use. The shear stress will be using as a tau, but because you are dealing with water, so shear stress is going to be 0. 
yeah this is pressure correct pressure sensors are the same at that point is it not a stress is a sort of a pressure okay so this is your sigma 2 which is negative and this is your sigma 1 which is positive <coughs> so t sin alpha gets cancelled all along the periphery of the system so if i have to draw a equilibrium condition can i write like this t cos alpha which is acting on which surface the meniscus and because of that the entire thing is getting lifted up so t cos alpha into pi d is this correct this is the periphery is this correct multiplied by t cos alpha and this is what is balancing the weight of the water column in the capillary tube. <coughs> so, this will be h c into gamma w and what is the volume of the water? Is this okay? So, area into volume, this is the volume multiplied by density is the force, is this correct? Hope I have not made mistakes. So, the weight of the water which has gone into the capillary tube is pi d square by 4 into height of the column volume multiplied by gamma w. Equate this and what you are going to get? Uh, you will be getting S c equal to 4 t cos alpha pi d gets cancelled out upon d. Is this okay? T is the force per unit length surface tension. In most of the cases when you are dealing with the glass and water alpha is 0, not a very good assumption. So, nowadays people can find out the alpha value as I said you can substitute over here and if you are very interested in seeing how all this works you please contact Ganaraj and uh, see in the laboratory mercury intrusion porosimeter which works on this concept of thin capillary tubes by which we find out the pore diameters present in the soil mass concrete or coal sample or steel sample anything all right so those of those who are interested you can show them so this gets simplified to 4 t upon d into gamma w Another simplified form of this would be, I will come to that later. Now, very cleverly what I can do, you are asking this question, hello, h c into gamma w is also defined as u w, but this water is under tensile stresses. So, height of the column multiplied by gamma w would give me a sort of a pressure term. So, this is a pressure, this is okay now. We call this as the pore of pressure, and the pore of pressure happens to be negative over here. There is one approximation which people have done, they say h c is equal to 0.3 upon d and this is in centimeters where d is also in centimeters just let me check yeah is correct all right <coughs> this is a thumb rule equation which has been derived by people now concentrate for a minute you will understand lot of geotechnical engineering without much of efforts <coughs> ready stop writing please <coughs> the interpretation is like this d is the diameter of the pores in the soil mass correct the smaller the diameter 
higher the capillary action. Agreed? Number 1, I can create this D by compacting the soil. So, a loose material if I compact it, what I am doing? I am reducing the D size. So, the more and more you compact the soil, the capillary action increases. Remember in your index properties when we are talking about different types of gammas, there I told if the granular material is standing above the water table, it would be dry. But suppose if it is a compacted fine grain material, the capillaries are going to be extremely active, that is the capillary zone. <coughs> so, what this indicates is under the hydrostatic equilibrium, a capillary will show you the height of water in it as H c, which is guided by this, and it so happens that d is defined as E into d 10. A very interesting equation. What is E? What is E? Sorry? Very good, excellent. So, E is the wide ratio and what is d 10? Particles finer than 10 percent of the mass. So, d 10 is a standard material concept or the property which you can get from the particle size distribution curve. This is one of the applications of PSD. <coughs> particle size distribution characteristics if they are known, immediately you can find out what will be the d value substituted over here, you get the capillary action. Most of the disasters which are taking place in the country in terms of infrastructure development are because you are not selecting the material properly, number one. Number two, you are not compacting the material properly and then number three, you are not designing the whole system properly. The entire thing comes from here you do any type of consulting, this is the first rule of the game. Contractors do not compact. Now, this E into D 10 is also known as effective pore size. Or effective diameter also, both. So, imagine if I take the soil compact it properly E is decreasing, D 10 remains same, D 10 is the fundamental property of the material, E is the matrix, clear. So, heavily compacted systems are going to give you higher SC, what I have to do? I have to take care of capillary rise in most of the practical situations, so that highways do not remain submerged. So, in the coastal areas where you are developing road networks, if you are defining this concept, most of the time the water table will be sucked up up to S c value. Is this part clear? If these are the two particles, I can assume this as d correct, because ultimately that the pores themselves are being assumed as the tube. So, you are right absolutely right. So, this is d. When you compact them, what is going to happen? This d is going to get decreased clear they come closer nice. So, truly speaking this capillary tube is an assumption that you have two particles of the soils and then you are having water inside because of the capillary action and then this happens. So, if I draw the free body diagram of the particle how does it look like if this is a particle and if this is a particle and there is a thin layer of water on this let us say capillary water. Have you come across this somewhere in mechanics? You must have solved this problem, I am sure, in engineering mechanics. Belt, correct. So, if I cut it, what is going to happen? This is a grain, and there is a layer of water which is nothing but surface tension. So, what surface tension does? it is sort of a rubber band, put a rubber band and 
do like this what happens the tendency of the rubber band is to bring this back to the original position because of the tension exactly same thing is happening. So, same thing is happening over here. So, this is the T this is the T surface tension the more surface tension gets developed particles have a tendency to come closer to each other all right there are a lot of ways to interpret this. Now, suppose what is going to happen now because of this suppose this is what is going to happen the particles come absolutely close to each other at this point of contact there will be a normal stress. This is what is defined as effective stress So, please do not talk about the pressure term all right do not use the term pressure we always talk in terms of the stresses. Now, this is the intergranular contact stress which is acting at the contact of the two grains and what is the root cause of this surface tension clear. So, if I were applying a normal stress sigma on this control volume this sigma would be equal to sigma prime plus u w. this is the theory of effective stress. So, what we say here is the sigma prime value will be equal to sigma minus u w have you understood this u w is the pore water pressure sigma is the pressure which we applied externally and what is getting delegated between the particles is sigma prime which is what is known as effective stress. This theory was given by Terzaghi. Now, suppose if I ask you to plot the variation of pressure along the length of this tube So, along the length of the tube if I ask you to draw the pressure distribution clear how this will look like any idea this is hydrostatic pressure you have already drawn this in your engineering mechanics course is this okay where this is that what about the upper one upper portion what what is the pressure at this point we are going to ignore it. So, we will put it as neutral pressure 0 this is also known as neutral pressure. Coming back to your question when you apply stress externally this stress gets transmitted into the pores and pores are filled up with water the distribution of the pressure in the water is all around and it is equal. So, the net pressure at that point is 0 under atmospheric conditions and hence we call this as neutral pressure. So, pore water pressure is also known as neutral pressure unless you increment the sigma value. How this sigma value will get incremented? I started constructing a building and today the height of the building is let us say 3 story tomorrow it becomes 5, 7, 10, 20. So, what is happening every day? Every day sigma is getting increased clear. So, what is happening because of sigma getting increased the pore water pressure is also getting increased as long as there is no way for water from the pores to escape typical fine grain soils and then we will discuss quite in detail about consolidation. So, now come back to this question. So, what I was talking about is the pore pressure is also known as neutral pressure is this ok have you heard this why because this is under static condition this is the pressure in equilibrium in the pores unless you create some disturbance. Now, this is what is going to be the pressure diagram here. So, what will be this magnitude?
this is negative and this is positive where else you have come across this type of a pressure diagram sorry very nice where beams rcc correct now what i am talking about here i have created a beam situation in the soils itself initial 2 3 lectures when we are talking about why it is so easy to drive a car on beaches which are wet and why can't you drive a car on the beaches which are dry are you getting the answer what has happened what water does it provides tensile strength to the material clear so under tension also you have so much of stresses which are which can be negotiated by external stresses so the pressure which is getting transmitted because of the moving vehicle on the wet sands on the beach is going to be less than gamma wsc beaches and beach sands are notorious for sucking and retaining water in them <coughs> finer the material come back to this finer the material d10 is going to be extremely low when d10 is going to be extremely low d is going to be less finer the material capillary action is going to be maximum clear so what i have to do when i am designing infrastructure on the clay soils where the grain size are very small what i should be doing i should be putting a layer of cutting off the seepage which keeps on moving up that is the concept of design of him infrastructure in marine clays are you following these concepts they are very simple i mean all throughout your life you will remember you can't forget them and nothing is to be marked up you agree yeah in the water zone how the pressure can be linear because it is it will be up to a height of for the capillarity but you drawn the graph as linear very good question and very difficult to answer so truly speaking it's not linear but for the sake of convenience we are assuming this to be linear you are right that the pressure would not be linear you are right but this is an approximation so what you should be doing is you should insert different type of tensiometers all along the column of the soil which is in wedo zone if you are so eager come to our lab we can show you the most electronic most recent uh, sensors which are normally used to measure the negative pressures but don't get involved in all these things at this stage but your point is correct is okay so have you understood the concept of reinforcement of the soil because of the water present in it and that to under suction so suction helps you have you followed everything any question which you think would you like to ask the rest of the things are absolutely simple there is no complication if you have followed this concepts <coughs>